Now, I'm not sure where you're at in the world, but from where I'm at, it's starting to get really hot. And when it's really hot, yes, I still drink hot coffee, but it would be nice if there was a refreshing way to ingest my coffee. Now, I know that a lot of you would be like, oh, cold brew, cold brew. Cold brew tastes like you're drinking coffee filtered through a used sock from a, a sports person. Gross. What we're gonna do in today's video is teach you how to properly make iced coffee. Cold brew sucks. I said it. Some of you are probably mad. Some of you are probably agreeing with me. If you're sitting there nodding, you know good coffee. If you're sitting there saying, but cold brew's good, you don't want that thick, chocolatey, musty chocolate, oily sludge going down in your body. You don't go 40 Celsius heat and chug milk. You don't do that. I mean, I do sometimes. You want something refreshing, crisp, and refreshing. Now, I'll be honest, if you do enjoy it, I really don't care. I'm, I'm not actually trying to shame anybody. You drink what you like, and if you like, cold brew, as my wife does, you know, enjoy it, that's fine. So instead of just complaining about cold brew, I'm gonna show you a better way of making cold coffee, and that'll be a flash brew. If this is your first time on this channel, my name is Lance Hedrick. I've been working in coffee for about a decade, love to make fun videos, love to nerd out. I am a very opinionated person, but I always like to back it with, everyone has their own preferences. So again, if you like cold brew, that's cool, but maybe give this a try as well. The typical way I've heard people describe flash brew or how you should go about approaching it is that you should brew your coffee as normal, like in a pour over, and instead of using your full amount of water, you divide that water up into like 60, 40 or, or 65, 35 water to, ice. And so you put ice in your decanter, you brew your coffee, you let that ice be part of your brew water. Now, I have issues with that ratio. And now I understand why the ratio is the way it is. And it's because as you're brewing your coffee on top of the ice, you need enough ice in there to bring the temperature of the liquid down to essentially freezing. So when you pour it over ice, it doesn't melt anymore. I get it. Now to do some math, if your typical daily cup of coffee is a 20 gram dose to 300 grams of water, a one to 15 ratio, what the typical recipe would tell you to do is take 60% uh, of your brew water. So 60% of 300 would be 180 grams. Grams. We take 60% of it, and that's what we use to brew the coffee. And then 40% of that brew water we have as ice inside the decanter, so 120 grams. And now the idea is that 180 grams of water going through the coffee, ice will melt, and then you'll have a cold coffee that you pour over ice. My issue with that has always been your new ratio for your actual recipe that you're actually brewing with is a one to nine ratio. That is absurdly low to get any type of extraction. Sometimes when you put coffee on ice, it can get it can get like a bitter taste. Whatever recipe that you use for whatever coffee you've dialed in, you can just integrate what I show you today into that. But today we're gonna go with 20 to 300. I find that's a very common cup size. One to 15 is very common ratio. It's not my preferred ratio, but it is a good ratio for, you know, maybe a little bit more processed coffees or a little bit more developed coffee. So assuming the 60-40 ratio that a lot of people do recommend, I'm gonna do a one to nine brew and we're gonna measure the extraction yield of that. This will give you an idea of how much you're extracting on those typical ice brews. And then we'll go into what I think uh, should be the new way of doing this and what I really, really do enjoy. So let's get going. So today I'm brewing this nice Honduran Geisha from Apollon's Gold. It's really nice, bright, vibrant acidity. So it should be really nice on this flash brew method. I'm going to be brewing one, uh, a one to nine ratio because that would be 60% of our normal brew water in a one to 15. Now, usually a mistake I see people make is they try to optimize all their variables when they're brewing because they have so little brew water. So they'll do really fine grinds, they'll do a lot of agitation, a ton of pours, because they know that they only have 60% of their normal solvent. But then the issue is it turns out bitter and they're like, oh, the ice is shocking the coffee, it makes it bitter, which I guess there could be something to that, but I have read there've been a lot of blind attempts at this where people haven't been able to tell the difference between shocked coffee and not shocked. When you push all those limits, it does turn out bitter, even if it's under extracted. I actually like grinding a little bit coarser and relying on other things, which we'll get into here in a bit. But anyway, we just did a one minute bloom with one to three ratio on that. Now we're gonna pour to our total brew weight of 180 grams, which is that one to nine. And of course, again, this is just a recommendation that people give for any recipe. So just take your brew water and multiply it by 0.6 and that's what your new brew water is going to be. Now, I'll do a little stir here at the end, give it a little extra agitation, boom, boom. 
Now we're gonna let it drain. Now the full brew time on uh, videos I've seen should be around you know two, three minutes, something like that, and it should be brewing on top of ice. Now because I'm measuring the total dissolved solids and calculating extraction yield, I don't have ice in there obviously. I'm trying to get a true reading of what we're actually extracting during this process. I have uh, clean this with alcohol, then clean it again with distilled, and I've zeroed out this refractometer, so we should get a pretty good reading as to what this extraction actually is. So once this finishes, I'm gonna take the brew weight, the total brew weight, I'll measure the TDS, and we'll see what we're actually uh, brewing at. So the total brew weight is 144.1 grams, so that's showing you that the grounds absorbed roughly uh, double their weight in water. Um, if we would have kept brewing, more water would have been able to enter the grounds. Obviously, that didn't happen because we didn't give it much time to brew or enough water really to fully saturate. The water wants to go through the grounds. So 144.1 is that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my little Umashiso James Hoffman little spoon, take a little sample size, and I'm gonna put it on this big thermal mass spoon, just drop it on there, put it around to kind of flash chill it, get it down to a good temperature, and then we kind of just place it on the refractometer. We get an extraction yield of 17%. The TDS was 2.36%. That means 2.36% of our coffee is actually coffee. And so the extraction yield is 17%, meaning 17% of the bean we were able to extract. But we typically aim for around 20, 21, 22%. So we're quite a bit below that. How can we get a higher extraction without sacrificing the, the delicacies of the coffee, without getting all that intense bitterness that usually happens with these flash brews? I'm gonna show you. Now I have it set up once more, but this time I'm going to do kind of my, what I like to do. So instead of filling ice in the beginning, which is the typical way of doing it, to where as it's going, hot liquids coming out, melting the ice, that takes more ice to cool everything down. So you need a higher ratio, like 60-40. But if we don't put ice in here and we brew coffee normally and then add ice slowly and stirring it, we can use a lot less ice. So we can use more brew water. Then we can grind a bit more more coarsely, we can extend our brew time, brew recipe without having to push everything so much in a frantic attempt to make sure that everything is extracted well. So I'm gonna brew this, we'll take a sample and I'll finish up the flash brew, uh, but what you're gonna see is a much higher extraction and it'll be a much more pleasant taste. It won't be watery, etc. Big thing I need to caution you about when making flash brew coffee, make sure that not only is your water for brewing really good, like tailored to it, whether it's filtered water or you're creating your own, your own water or whatever it might be, but make sure your ice is good. If you're not using tap water for your brew water, don't use ice from your fridge because that's from tap water as well. Instead, make your own ice. There's gonna be off flavors in that tap water, whatever water you might have that will ruin your brew. Now that we've taken a big chunk of our brew water and it's now ice, that's gonna be a big part of your final beverage. Water freezes at zero, but some freezers are colder than others. And because different sizes of ice melt at different rates, you're gonna have to kind of figure out what weight works for you. So I'm gonna kind of show you how that works works. First, let's go ahead and brew this coffee up and we'll take the sample for reading. Let's go. So instead of doing 140 grams like the last one that was 60%, at 80% we're doing 240 grams of water. But the ice is not going in the decanter. That's the number one thing to consider. So I let that bloom sit for a minute. I did a one to three bloom. Then I poured to 150. I'm letting it sit for 45 seconds. Then at a minute 45, I'm just going to pour controllably up to 240. Now I don't want to do too much agitation. Since we're doing an extra pour here, we should be good on our agitation. Then right when we're at 240, I am going to give it a little swirl just to help with that drawdown, flatten the bed out a bit. All right, so we just finished brewing and I'm going to take the total brew weight. So this was, unlike the first one, that was about a one to nine ratio. This is a one to 12. So much closer to that one to 15. We're going to take the weight with a uh, 20 gram batch, roughly absorbing twice its weight. We're at 201. Now we're gonna take the sample, go ahead and measure the TDS. We're at a 1.79 TDS, uh, and which gives us an extraction right at 18%. Now I know that's still not up to 20, which we're not gonna hit 20 without sufficient water. When you're doing a one to 12, it's just not possible. Getting that one extra percent though is going to really help improve your coffee. And depending on the coffee, this one's a pretty hard to extract one. You're gonna get much higher than that even. Uh, and I was not at boiling. You can go to boiling if you want, but these coffees I like to do a little bit less in boiling in order to preserve a lot of the flavor characteristics of the coffee itself. We have that remaining 60 grams that we can use for ice. I have these ice cubes here. I'm gonna take one of these big boys, plop it in. 
These ice cubes weigh about 60. So I'm putting the whole one in there and I'm gonna stir until we have a good temperature. Now, if you have smaller ice cubes, you're gonna wanna do like one by one or a couple by a couple and stir until they melt. But the idea is we get this down to five, 10 degrees or so, and then we can pour it over ice. And again, the idea with this is that we're not brewing over the ice, which will melt a lot faster, necessitating more ice. We're adding the ice afterwards and we're allowing it to, to cool down more efficiently our coffee. All right, once we get that ice all in there and we're, we have enough ice in there to where ice is not melting nearly as quickly, so you get it down to, you know, 5, 10, 15, around that temperature, then it's a good time, you know, it's cool to the touch that we can pour it over our cup of ice and it shouldn't really melt the ice to dilute it further. If we were to take the TDS now, it would be down around 1.3, 1.35, so much thinner body, and that's a typical, uh, a typical cup of coffee is about 1.35%, so you have a thinner body which will allow it for a much lighter, refreshing, crispy be feeling. If you do a much heavier, that higher TDS earlier, the 2.4, even with that ice, you're still going to have a pretty thick kind of body. This is going to give you a much more crisp, refreshing body. But anyway, let's get some ice in here and give it a taste. I needed this because it is hot outside, as you can see from my beating up sweat, but it's absolutely fantastic. And oh, mm. it's like Kool-Aid. It's really good. Sorry. Oh, we'll go. Fine. Take it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like under pressure when Ugo's taste testing my things. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I like to do 80 to 20, but of course you can test it out with your own ice. If you need more ice, you obviously maybe go 75, 25, less ice. If you have a really, you know, really solid ice that won't melt, maybe 85, 15. But the more water you can use, the more the extraction, the more it can taste like your typical coffee, the more you're gonna be able to get all those nuance and complexities that you can get while extracting with hot water. This is far superior to cold brew. Whoever you are, it's fine, it's, it's better. You still prefer cold brew, that's you know your prerogative but during the summertime these are my go-to whenever i do feel like i need a nice coffee i hope that you enjoyed this uh, i've not ever done iced coffee content before and i thought you know maybe it was time to start and this coffee's just a banger on um on iso I'm not sharing anymore with Ugo. Whatever ratio you use, it really doesn't matter. The brewing water do an 80-20 as opposed to the typical 60-40, 70-30, whatever it is. And what you're gonna do is add the ice afterwards and be very thorough on stirring. Stirring is gonna help cool it down more quickly. The idea is you want it to cool down as quickly as possible with as little ice as possible. And make sure that you're using good quality ice, whether that's distilled ice or the same water chemistry that you're using for your brew water, which is ideal because you're gonna get some of that goodness from the magnesium, the calcium, the sodium bicarbonate, the potassium, and bicarbonate, whatever it is that you use. So make sure when you're doing this, the idea is putting ice after, you're stirring, you're getting it down to cool temp before you put it on the ice so you don't want it to further dilute. And then you'll have perfect drinking TDS, a really nice extraction, really floral, sweet, citrusy, fruity, crispy coffees. And you're gonna be sipping like a baller during the summer. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I hope that you all have a less toasty summer than mine. Um, and uh, yeah, cheers.